All right, we're going to go now and look at the list of methods on strings that I was supposed to cover. The ones that I have put in bold are the ones that are the most heavily tested on the AP exam. Substring, we talked about the very first day we talked about strings. Length, you can ask a string how many characters it has. We discussed compare to last class. Is that correct? Yeah. That tells you where it looks up in the dictionary versus another string. Today, we talked about equals, and we're now going to talk about index of. Index of means where is it located in the string? Where is it located in the string? So let's look at that for a second now. We're going to do a demonstration of index of. So I'm going to create a string here, A equals A, B, C, D, E, F. And I ask the question, uh, let's go int position equals A dot index of B, C, D. And I want to know, is there a B, C, D in that other string? And if so, where does it start? And just as a reminder, the positions in a string start at what number? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, like that. OK? So now, who can tell me, is there a B, C, D in the string? And where is it? Um, Mr. Matloub, what do you think, sir? OK. So here we are before lunch. We were talking about index of. So let me just recalibrate you. We had this string A, B, C, D, E, F. And I asked the string, do you contain B, C, D? And if so, where is the first occurrence start? And uh, I forget who answered, but they said it starts at position one. And that is correct. So let's compile and run this. and nothing that's not good did i not print it oh never printed it that would help okay and you can see it starts at position one now if i ask it where does the first a appear Miss uh, Emily, where does the first A appear? Look over here and look at the positions. Where does the first A appear? Zero. So now if we compile and run this, you'll see it says zero. Now, if I have more A's in here, what do you think the answer is going to be? Uh, Mr. Orespaev, what do you think, sir? Still zero, because it finds the first one, and then it kind of stops looking after that, so you can still see that it's zero. Now, if I ask for A, B, C, A, uh, sorry, if I ask for A, E, A, now what's the answer going to be here, Mr. Sneed? Zero, one, two. Two is a C, sir. Three. So you can see it's going to be at position three. See, it's position three. And we already discussed that if I look for an A, it gives me a zero back. What if I look for an AZ? Where is it? Does it exist in the string? No. So I, it needs to return a number. It always returns a number. What number do you think it's going to return if it can't find it? Do you think it'll return a zero? Ms. Salutkar, what do you think? Zero means it starts at the first position, but there is no AZ at the first position. Ms. Ria, what do you think? Negative one. In Java, negative one means I did not find it. That'll be true for a lot of methods, okay? But this one in particular means I did not find it. So let's go and look over here and run it. And you can see it comes back with a negative one saying I didn't find it. Now let's look over here. Let's say I look for a small a. 
What do you think? Is it going to say zero or negative one or some other number possibly? What do you think here? Mr. Menez, what do you think? Negative one. This little a is as different from this capital A as any other letter is different from it. Okay, so you can see that this will also not find it. So therefore, you can see that this index of, just like Java in general, is highly case sensitive. It's case sensitive. So it doesn't think that that little a is the same as the big A. So I'm just going to give you a couple of these to do now, and we'll look at them together. Okay, you do these and try try to figure out what's going to happen before you run the program, and then we'll come back and we'll discuss in just a minute. Negative one, no. It's looking for a BC, a capital BC here. Is there a capital BC here? Okay, where does it start? It starts at position one. So. This one will be a negative one. This one will be a plus one. What will this one be here, Mr. Degouge? There's no capital A, little b, little c. And what about this BCA here, Mr. Sawyer? Sir, can you tell me what this will return? That will also return one. So let's compile and run all these. And you can see we got all the answers we were expecting right there. Okay, so index of is fairly straightforward. The only thing you got to remember here is that there's a difference between upper and lower case. You also have to remember if it doesn't find it, it returns a negative one. All right, so now uh, we're going to move on to the next string method. Let me see if I can find what that is. Um, we're going to do replace next, replace and replace all. So let's look at those two. So we're going to now do replace, replace and replace all. So let's say I have this string right here and I go. A dot replace B with Z. And then I go system out print LN A. Talk to your partner about what's going to print here. Okay. So with that out of the way, can uh, someone tell me what do you expect to print here? Let's see, someone who has not helped me yet today. Uh, okay, Ms. Masson, what do you expect to see? You would think so, Miss, but that's actually not what happens. Let me show you. And look, it, it, it didn't even change the string at all. And I want to know why. You've already forgotten something I taught you last class, Miss Caitlin. So what do I need to do here, miss? I need to go like this. Remember that strings are immutable. I taught you that a real long time ago. And you need to remember that. And this is how they're going to trick you on the AP exam. Okay, you saw how I just tricked you? So now you got to remember that in order to change the string, you would need to reset the pointer. Now, Miss uh, Sophie, what is the... Uh, Okay, A Z C A E A. So, like that. So, let's look over here. And you can see the B changed into a Z. You see that, right? Now, let's do this replace all. And then I'm going to change the A to a Z. And what do you think is going to happen here, Miss Davis? Can you tell me what's going to happen here? Um, it's going to Look, I'm changing the A's to Z's. Oh, it's going to print Z, B, C, Z, E. Okay, let's look at that. And you can see all the A's got turned into Z's. I have one last surprise for you. What do you think this one does? Take a guess. Mr. Pandali, what do you think it does? 
You would think so, right? But look what happens now. It replaces all of them. So now you're like, how silly that we have two methods that do the same thing. But it turns out they don't do the same thing because one of them can change wildcard characters while the other one cannot. What's a wild char card character, you say? These things here, question mark, that stands for a single character. This stands for a group of wildcard characters, that type of thing. So, for example, if I go like this and run it, you can see it leaves the string unchanged. But if I go like this and run it, you can see that I get a different answer because this looks at a regex. This one actually has some kind of error in it. But this one here is not tested on the AP exam. The only one you have to remember is this one. And you have to remember that it replaces every single occurrence, not just the first one. Ms. Saludkar. I think that's probably why it could confused it. Let's just try a different one here. Let's try this uh, star here and see if that works. Let's try that. No, that didn't work either. No, it should be a wild card character. All right. Well, in any case, don't worry about that. Just note that this is the one that you need here. This, by the way, if I run it here, it, you can see it didn't find the star, so it just leaves the string alone. Okay. I'm just curious what I'm doing wrong here. Uh, one of the TAs helped me. What am I doing wrong here? Do I need a backslash? Sam, do you remember? Let me just see what it says. It says uh, pattern syntax dangling meta character. Do I need a dot here, sir? Yeah, okay, so I need a dot. So in any case, you can see that this one uses funky characters that have special meanings, but we're actually not gonna learn that here. If you're interested in meta characters like this and regular expressions, you can take an entire course, one semester course in college on regular expressions. Most languages have them and they're extremely complicated, but we don't need to learn them in our course. We're just gonna leave it like this. And we're just going to handle individual characters or groups of characters. Let's try this now. Okay, what's going to happen here now? Uh, let's see. Miss Tamara, what's going to print now? Very good. So D-E-F-A-E-A. -E -A. You can see it changes there. And one last one I'll do. This one here. And ask for one last volunteer. Mr. Borden, sir, what do you think about this one? Uh, no, sir. Uh, I have this wrong here, sorry. I have my act together now. Well, what's it gonna be, sir? Okay. A, B, C, Z, D, Z. And the other one that I had here accidentally, which I didn't mean to have, it's just going to leave the string unchanged because it won't find the Z, Z at all. So let me show you that. It'll leave the string unchanged. Okay. So if it doesn't find it, it doesn't create a runtime error. It just leaves it unchanged because there were no occurrences. So that is how you do replace. Remember, replace does replaces every character. How about this one? What's going to happen to the string? Mr. Degouge leaves it alone because little a is different from big A. So now I'm going to show you this one and then we'll move on. And that's that. And now we have just, so I think we've talked about everything. Oh, we haven't talked about trim. Uh, let's talk about trim next.
So sometimes when you're asking the user, let's say you ask the user to enter their name, right? So uh, let's say they enter their name and their name is Bob, but they accidentally type their name like this. So you can see you asked for their name and they typed in this, but they accidentally put a space in the front here. See that, right? Now, if you store the, the name like this, it's going to create all kinds of confusion because later on when you go to match the name, it won't match the name Bob because it's got a leading space on it. And furthermore, if you print it out, you won't be able to tell what's going wrong because it still looks like Bob when you print it. This is kind of a big problem in computer science. So one of the things we want to do is we want to trim the string. And so what trim does, removes leading and trailing white space now what's white space white space are blanks tabs other characters that are basically white so let's look at what happens here it's going to replace it's going to remove this this space here it's going to remove and it's going to remove all these trailing spaces so let me show you how it in action like that okay and to show you what's been removed i'm going to put in some special brackets here just to show you where the string begins and ends it'll be just be a little easier to see with these little brackets in there okay like that oops there we go all right so let's run this And you can see it removed the leading and trailing blanks. You see that? Now, if I have blanks inside here, like this, it won't remove those because those are not uh, irrelevant. Those might be important. Like you might have a sentence in here or something like that, and you, you want to separate the words. So trim only trims at the beginning of the string and at the end of the string. It doesn't touch these intermediate blanks in the middle. So let me show you that. There you go. You can see that it didn't touch any of the blanks inside the string. It only uh, removed the ones from the beginning and the end of the string. So that is trim. And then the last one is starts with and ends with. Now, let me tell you something about starts with and ends with. These two are technically not tested on the AP exam. However, if you learn them with me here, they're simple to use. They might be useful on the AP exam as an option for you and it'll shrink the code significantly. And they're easy to learn. So this is the first year I'm actually teaching starts with and ends with. And so let me show you how that works. What do you think is gonna print here? What do you think is gonna print? Um, Ms. Spanerji, what do you think is gonna print? True is correct. You can see it's true. And what happens if I do this? What do you think will happen this time, Mr. Sneed? It's false because the little F won't match. So now if I run this, false. Now, let me show you something really weird here. If I go like that, right? You see, it won't give me an error, which is nice. Okay, if you try to do a substring on this thing, you're gonna get an error because there's nothing in it. But you can still ask it starts with and ends with. Let me try an experiment I've never tried before. Let me see if I don't initialize the string, what happens? Now that it didn't like. Okay, so you still can't use null, but you can use an empty string here. All right, so that basically, I think, concludes all the methods on string that we need. This other method called split, we can't learn this until um, we, we, we need something called an array. And we haven't learned arrays yet. So that's like a little, couple of months down the road, we'll come back and learn the string split method. But we've gone over all of these methods now. 
and you are now in a position not only to do the coding bat exercises on string, but also to do the corresponding exercises now on the College Board site to practice for Unit 2. The only topic I have not covered is this topic right here. So you can leave those blank in your practice for now on the College Board site, but we've covered everything else. So you've got about a half hour now, and I'm gonna ask you to work on your coding bat and your College Board stuff. And I'm gonna distribute my TAs to help certain students, but I'll keep one or two in reserve in case somebody else needs help. Does anybody have any questions about today's lecture? Mr. Borden? Okay. Uh, here you go, sir. Do you have a question? No. No? Okay. All right. Um, so uh, the rest of the period is for you to practice on. And... Um, here, hold on a second. Let me.